In this video, we are going to break down the Indie Comics on Final Order cutoff for this coming Monday that I recommend you guys go and check out. Some of them are continuing series, some of them are first issues, so we're going to talk about all those. Final Order cutoff, uh, for those that don't know, is the last day that shops can guarantee their orders will be received and that they will get the books that they are requesting. Uh, after that point, they may still be able to order some of these books, but there is no guarantee that they will get them. So if you go to the Previews World website, into their uh, catalog tab, you can find Final Orders Due, and that is where I get my information from. Uh, Lunar has a different Final Order cutoff date, and that is on Sunday, which some of the indie publishers do also uh, have books on the Final Order cutoff at Lunar, but just to keep it consistent, I'm going to use the dates of Final Order Cutoff that are from the previous catalog. So let's start at the top of the page where we're going to see Image Comics. And the first one on that list is Bloodstained Teeth number four. This one from Christian Ward and Patrick Reynolds. I have not gotten to read issue number three yet. I just got it yesterday because there was a delay in delivery, but going to be reading it soon. I absolutely love the first two issues of this. Patrick Reynolds' art is fantastic. Christian Ward's writing is fantastic. And essentially, it's about vampires. And, you know, the old vampires do not create new ones. Uh, but one of them decided to do so for money. Because, you know, you're immortal. You gotta have some money to, to keep things going. And the others found out so now he is being forced to hunt them down and kill them all or he himself will be killed so super cool concept he is going after each of his creations and this one it's a bad trip when atticus sloan gets trapped inside the memory palace of dr now a vampire who feeds not just on blood but on memories themselves can atticus escape before his consciousness is consumed forever uh, featuring guest art from series co-creator and Eisner award-winning artist Christian Ward. So it looks like he is doing uh, some of the interior art on this as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, going down in image, we've got Seven Sons, number two of seven from Robert Wyndham, Kelvin Mao, and Jay Lee. Of course, like we talked about last time, uh, this was, uh, I think, when it was coming out. Jay Lee returning to create her own comics with his first new title since 1994. Uh for me, issue one was a little a little odd, but it is a very odd story. Um, I'm giving this one the two, ish, two issues, three issues, uh, to really see how I feel about this series. But I love Jay Lee's art inside of this, so I may stay on this solely to look at Jay Lee's art on the interiors because it's fantastic. Um, but uh, issue two... Uh, Introduces uh, Ep introduces his sheltered brother Delph to the pleasures of the outside world while questioning their existence and the nature of the Church of the Seven. So I think because we've set up a lot of stuff, seen a lot of stuff set up in issue one, we're really going to get into more of the story coming uh, into issue two and three, and I think that's where I'm going to like the story more. Moving down the list in image, we've got Skybound X number 25. So this is... Uh, bringing back the anthology, Skybound anthology series for four all-new upcoming comic launches. Uh, we've got From the Pages of Invincible comes Battle Beast. So Battle Beast is coming back from Robert Kirkman and Ryan Otley. New horror epic Dark Ride reunites Josh Williamson and Andre Bresson, the acclaimed team behind Birthright. First appearance of The Savage and Beautiful Chroma by writer-artist Lorenzo de Felici from Oblivion Song. And also, when all of humanity dies, the animals battle for survival in the post-apocalyptic world of Scurry by Max Smith. Um, and the cover A is of Battle Beast on, the, on there. Um, I don't know why it's Skybound X number 25. I thought we stopped at 6. So... I don't know, this is just Kirkman numbering things weirdly again, but who knows. A um, couple new things, though, in that that may be worth checking out, seeing if they pique your interest for following the series later on. And, of course, they'd like to do that, you know, who? First appearance. So, first appearance of some things in here that uh, may be worth checking out. Uh, last one 
coming from Image is Stillwater number 14 from Chip Zdarsky, Ramon Perez, and Mike Spicer. Stillwater is unique. Stillwater is immortal, but miracles can happen more than once. Will the town be able to accept that? Uh, I have absolutely loved this series. This is in its final story arc now. I think issue 18 will be the last one. And um, issue 14 coming up on Final Order Cutoff. So moving out of Image, Boom is actually now the second listed company. It used to be down below Marvel. Uh, maybe down even below Dynamite, if I'm trying to remember. I think between Marvel and Dynamite. But it is now second listed. It's above IDW and Dark Horse. And Boom has the Once in Future Grail Pack. Uh, doing a similar thing like they did with Something is Killing the Children and the David Mack covers. This time they're reprinting Once in Future 1 through 6 with covers by Raul Allen. I'm not familiar with that artist, but these are pretty cool covers. It's got the different characters uh, featured on the cover. I'm probably going to skip this one because I, I'm not as big of a fan of the artist, though they are really cool covers, um, as I was David Mack and Something Killing the Children ones. But uh, if you haven't gotten to read Once in Future and you want to get some cool new collectible covers, I think this is this is a great way to do it. Uh, all right, so that uh, I didn't have anything Dark Horse or IDW or Dynamite uh, for indie stuff. So that takes us in, down to the comics and graphics novels section, which is usually my biggest section, and it is today. Uh, so first up on that list is Aftershock Comics, A Calculated Man number two from Paul Tobin and Albert Alberto Albuquerque. Issue one was just phenomenal, top-notch loved every second of of the issue and here's issue two it's all very nice that math genius jack beans is following through on his kill them all solution to the a crime family is trying to kill me equation but everyone makes mistakes and jack knows that mistakes always always catch up to you one fingerprint left behind and now it's not just the pinafore crime family on his trail but an entire city's police force as well the big odds keep getting bigger. Each issue of A Calculated Man, 24 pages of story with a, and art with a cardstock cover, $4.99 price tag, uh, which usually when they do the cardstock covers is how Aftershock will, will do it. Next one I have on my list is one from Oni Press called Blink. This is issue number one from Christopher Sabella and Hayden Sherman. Ren Booker was three when she was found catatonic and covered in blood on the streets of New York. Since that day, she's been haunted by a childhood she can't remember. After decades of searching, Ren stumbles upon a cryptic website streaming multiple CCTV feeds when, uh, from strange rooms in a ruined building and something clicks, setting off hidden memories that lead her back to a place she's seen in lifelong nightmares. Hunting for answers, Ren breaks into the building but instead finds herself entangled in the camera-filled dark mazes of a decayed social experiment known only as Blink. Eisner nominated Christopher Sabella from Dirtbag Rapture, Hayden Sherman uh, from Thumbs, and Nick Filardi, Rogue Planet, team up for a found footage horror where uncovering your past will leave you trapped inside of it. This story just sounds incredible. It's probably, it'll be one of my top picks the week that it comes out. Um, so if you're looking for a good story, uh, this is going to be one of the top ones to start reading and to add to your pool list now before uh, FOC on Monday. Moving down, we've got another one from Aftershock Comics. we got Bunny Mask, The Hollow Inside number three. I think this should be three of four, so we are getting close to the end of volume two of Bunny Mask. Uh, Paul Tobin, Andrea Moody... B. Foster and Bunny Mask together at last. But even as they meet, the Hollow is on the hunt. And with B. staggered by a loss of identity, there's no one more hollow, more worthy to hunt than B. herself. Even Bunny Mask will be challenged when this new sickness comes calling. Been loving all of Bunny Mask, so highly recommend checking that and out. There's a trade paperback for Volume 1 right now, and then you can get caught up on the series. Uh, speaking of trade paperbacks, there is a trade paperback for Cult of Icarus on 
FOC this week. This is a series from Vault from Vault, from Scout Comics, from Jenna Lynn Wright and Carl Slominski, and this was phenomenal read. All four issues, fantastic. Love this vampire story. Tossed out by her foster family after one too many rides home in the back of a cop car, Hunter packs up and sets out on a mission to find out who she is. A mysterious book, her only link to her parents, leads her to discover a covert world of magic and danger running parallel to our own. One punk rock show, two whiskeys, and three vicious vampire assassins later, Hunter's on the run from the ancient deadly cult of Icarus who believe that she may hold the key to everything they've ever wanted and will stop at nothing to get her. Or, more specifically, her blood. There's no escape from Icarus once they've got your scent, which leads to a blood-soaked showdown for the fate of humanity. Seriously, so much blood. I cannot recommend this one more. Go check it out. Uh, you can probably still you can get the second prints of issue number one, currently on Scout's website. You can get uh, two through four on there as well, or put an order with your shop to get the trade paperback and check this out. So moving on, the next one on my list, uh, talked about uh, this one a few times already, the Joneses, number four or five from Michael Morecki, Alessandro Vitti, and Ives Forcina. John Gallagher doing the covers, spinning out of the pages of the resistance. We're talking about our family the Joneses that have reborn powers after the global pandemic known as the Great Death. The story is very important because it does talk about, you know, the idea of the, the reborns are, everyone is prejudiced against them. They think that they're all going to use their powers against humans and cause problems. And now some of them are, that is something that is happening out there, but some of them want to do good and... So there is uh, this whole discussion on prejudice and even people who say they are open and welcoming are turning on the reborns. And so it's very interesting, like uh, social commentary going on while also telling the story about uh, powered people, whether they be heroes or villains. Um, and this issue, I think we're going to be getting a showdown between our two uh, powered families uh, that are, are seen in the pages. So Jones is number four of five. Um, it's going to be coming out. And this next one I think is the uh, probably the FOC pick of everything because it's looking like a cute story that um, Source Point Press is going to be putting out. This is coming from Garrett Gunn and Kit Wallace. One of the writers on uh, Good Boy and the artist of Good Boy, Little Red Ronin. A terrible beast has haunted the citizens of Pole Town for decades. Although the monster hasn't been seen in years, disappearances and gruesome killings still plague the townsfolk. Determined to clear her family name, Red hunts the great wolf in hopes of exonerating her grandmother who lived in exile for spreading terrifying propaganda. There are a few covers on this, including a, a TMNT homage, um, just some, some cool artwork on here. So definitely check out Little Red Ronin. It's uh, looking like a really cool story that's going to be coming out. And I'm, I'm excited to check it out. I think the writing that I've seen Garrett Gunn do so far is phenomenal, and I'm going to you know, I'm going to be reading a lot of his stories uh, that are coming out. A lot of them are coming from SourcePoint Press because he does have an imprint at SourcePoint Press now. Um, can't remember the name of it, but uh, the logo that is on the cover for Little Red Ronin is the logo for that imprint. So, uh, scrolling through, um, there have been some changes to FOC since I first pulled it up, a lot of vault books were pushed back. And so uh, Lunar Room originally was on there, but is not anymore. Uh, it looks like uh, Mindset number two was originally on there, but I don't see it anymore either. And that takes me over to one from Black Box Comics called Ninja Kaiden number one from Eric Palicki and Lucas Meyer. Not even a lifetime of martial arts training in years as an elite soldier could prepare Yuki Snow for this newest challenge. 
CEO of his deceased father's company. Suddenly thrust into a leadership role at Yokai Consolidated, Yuki finds himself taking over his father's pet project, the mysterious Kaiden Armor, which would allow its wearer to see, speak to, and touch ghosts. I love that concept. Um, I haven't really read too much from Black Box Comics, but I think that might be something that will uh, get me to check it out. Uh, just on concept alone there, seems pretty cool. Moving down, another one from Source Point Press. We've got Nook number two. So Nook number one just came out this last week and it is an oversized comic, uh, kind of magazine size. And it's phenomenal. It's black and white art on the interior, but it's a very emotional story. And it's also got some good creepy horror elements to it. Um, young girl and her family escape World War II Germany only to find that their new home is haunted by a dark past and a cat named Nook. Avery's new friend revealed the history of the old house and how the part, the past just might be the key to saving her future. Super cool story. The cat is what got me to pick it up originally. It is a three part story, so not too many issues, but it is well worth it. Moving down the list, one from Mad Cave Studios that I thoroughly enjoy, Nottingham, on to issue number 9 of 10. Getting to the last part of this arc. Um, I don't know, I don't know the plan if they're going to do a third story arc of this, but I've thoroughly enjoyed the first story arc. I'm really enjoying this one right now and what they've got going on with the two different parts of the story that, are, that are, I see happening. We're about to have a lot of chaos and bloodshed happening in the ranks of the royals. Um, and uh, in Rome, we see Robin and the sheriff trying to rescue King Richard from captivity, but they seem to be by themselves now um, after the events of last issue and without their ransom, without any other resources so we'll see if they can do it if they can pull off this attempt we should be getting some good action again in this issue i feel like and uh onwards to the to the finale next up another one from aftershock comics that i've been thoroughly enjoying is ocean will take us issue number four here from rich doke and carlos Oliveres. Elizabeth has gone missing and the gang will stop at nothing to find her, even if it means facing down the swim team on their own. But as they uncover the sinister motives driving the cult's activities, they learn that they and the entire town are in deeper danger than they ever imagined. Um, I think this is supposed to be a five issue series. I am doing a search to confirm what I think there. Uh, yes, it'll be a five issue series. Um, with the last one coming out in the end of August. Uh, but this one set to come out, um, looks like July 20th. So next up on the list from Behemoth Comics from the Happy Tank imprint, we have Redman number two of five. Redman number one should be coming out very soon. Uh, this one from Matt Frank and Jolion Yates. Uh, is what's listed, um, but on the cover I see uh, Goncalo Lopez is actually listed uh, next to Matt Frank's name. So I don't know if that's a, it's probably a diamond error of what they're doing there, but from the studio that created the cult TV show Ultraman, now a Marvel comic series and a Netflix show, here is Redman the Kaiju Hunter. The star monster of this second episode is Icarus, one of the classic enemies of the Ultraverse. His first appearance was in 1967 Ultra 7, followed by appearances in Ultraman Taro, Ultraman Ginga, and Ultraman X. Time to broadcast. Redman has a new opponent. Uh, ish, but like I said, issue one has not come out yet. But, uh, I mean, kaiju fighting and uh, Ultraman type story can't go wrong there. Happy Tank bringing us some fun stuff here. Very much looking forward to it. And it's pretty cool to see that, uh, you know, creator of Ultraman coming back and doing more, more stuff here. 
Uh, and that takes me to the end of the list. Uh, I had one more, but again, it got pushed back. It was a vault book, We Ride Titans. A couple others, you know, Fox and Hare, Heart Eyes, I thought were going to be on this week, but they've moved. Uh, I think Barbaric, which I'm very excited for, also moved. But that is uh, everything that I've got on FOC for this week. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know down in the comments what indie books you're looking forward to from this list. Uh, make sure you get your orders into your shops by Monday so that they can guarantee they'll get those books that you want for uh, those that are on final order cutoff this week. And uh, as always, collect what you love. See you next time.